This is the 2023 Kia Sportage X-Pro Prestige all-wheel drive. It's Kia's off-road ready version of one of its more popular crossovers. So is this thing the real deal or is it just another rugged sticker package? We're going to find out right now on Driving Sports TV. The crossover segment has seen explosive growth in the past decade. Part of this popularity is due to the incredible practicality of these lifted wagons. Over time, it was only natural that enthusiasts would modify their crossovers for even more off-road capability, with suspension lifts, larger all-terrain tires, lights, and skid plates. Of course, no trend goes unnoticed. And eager to trash in on this trend, car makers have started to introduce modified by the factory versions of their more popular models. From Jeep with its Trailhawk lineup to Subaru's Wilderness, even Honda has recently jumped in with its Trailsport brand. But where Honda's Trailsport is essentially a sticker package, at least currently, Subaru went all in with its new Wilderness brand. With more ground clearance, advanced off-road programs, all-terrain tires, and additional underbody protection. Features like this have made the Wilderness lineup a stunning success with enthusiasts. And that brings us to Kia's off-road focused X-Pro trim. This is the 2023 Kia Sportage X-Pro Prestige all-wheel drive. Price as it sits here with floor mats being the only option, 38,555 US dollars, including destination. As the most off-road capable Sportage you can get from the factory, it comes with aggressive off-road looks, mild all-terrain tires, and the X-Pro badge on the back. Yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that I dislike this new Sportage. Quite the contrary. So let's put aside all aspirations of off-road dominance. Let's put aside Kia's, let's just say, overly enthusiastic marketing lingo, and let's check out this Sportage for what it is. First, we're gonna check out all the features, we're then gonna take it for a drive, and then we're gonna take it to our test hill to see just how off-road capable this setup is. The included tires here are the BFG Trail Terrain TAs, and they are in a 235-65 R17 fitment, and they are, of course, wrapped around 17-inch wheels, and these are exclusive to the X-Pro. Um, I have to say, the look is fantastic. Um, although, in my experience, the Trail Terrain TAs are a very mild all-terrain tire, which means that they're more comparable to, say, the Wild Peak Trails than they are the Wild Peak um, AT3Ws. In short, these will probably be good on gravel roads, but they may struggle in other situations. We'll test that later. Though you can get this new Sportage in a variety of trims and powertrains, the X-Pro is only available with the 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder. It puts out 187 horsepower and 178 pound-feet of torque. It is connected through an eight-speed automatic transmission and it powers all four wheels through Kia's clutch-based all-wheel drive system. EPA rates economy at 23 miles to the gallon in town and 28 on the highway. In the back, you get lots of cargo capacity, up to 36.6 cubic feet behind the second row, fold all the rows flat for up to 74.1 cubic feet overall. Can you sleep in it? Uh, well, hmm, this false floor doesn't have a lot of support. I think I might have just cracked it. Okay, well, that's not a good thing. But now in terms of space, we do fit diagonally. And of course, we have a panorama sunroof which lets in tons of light. Under the floor is a space saver spare, which is a little disappointing because when you're doing off-roading, you need to have a full size. Honestly, I don't even know if a full size would fit in there. Hmm. This new Sportage is larger than the outgoing model. And one of the dividends there is leg room. I have tons of it. Uh, this is where I would normally be seated if I were driving. I'm six foot one, legs torso proportionate. I fit great. Got lots of room for my feet, for my legs. I have vents here in the second row. 
Um, I also get USB charging sockets, and these are USB-C built into the uh, seat backs, which is interesting. It's kind of a Kia thing. I also get hooks for clothes down here and another hook uh, for garments up here. Is that for garments? Can't remember. Or is it just to hold on? Ah! LED lighting, big panorama sunroof. And then in the center, I have an armrest with integrated cup holders. Overall, I'd rate this pretty good for a second row. Although climate control would be nice at close to 40 grand. You can ask for something, right? Inside the new Kia Sportage. Let's power it up. Hmm, nice. So this curved dual monitor display might look a little familiar. Yeah, <laughs> Mercedes does something very similar in their higher end trims these days. And it is a feature I actually really like. If you're gonna copy somebody, copy Mercedes Benz, please. Enough of the big vertical displays. I really like this. We have a digital gauge cluster on the left, which you can have a variety of different layouts. So this one is dynamic and it actually changes throughout the day, which is kind of cool. Uh, it also gives me video cameras for the turn signal positions, which is really neat. So you can kind of see what's going on uh, in your blind sides. Now over here, we of course have the standard Kia infotainment system. It's very similar uh, to what you would find on a Hyundai as well. It's pretty easy to use. Um, you have all of your main options here. And then on the main page, you have kind of a, a really calm uh, layout that tells me who's logged in, the current weather, and also uh, gives me time, date, and then a location of where I am on a map, which is nice. Touch any one of those, and I pop directly into that module. I can also just swipe aside, and I get all the other stuff. Now let's look at navigation. Uh, you can use voice commands. Navigate to the nearest coffee shop. <laughs> Blob. <laughs> okay, let's go to close to home espresso, sure. So the system actually works really well. It's cloud connected. It shows me uh, current traffic situations uh, and all the stuff that you would really want to do. Let's go ahead and cancel that. Uh, you can also add waypoints and other things using voice or uh, traditional search setups. Uh, radio, yeah, they still have their corny tube layout, which I, I just think this looks dated instantly. And I don't mean dated because it looks old fashioned. Uh, it's dated in that it's a copy of a look that's old fashioned. It's this whole kind of look of where you take something old and bring it into digital and it just doesn't work for me. Uh, I really wish they would get rid of this. I can switch between channels and then if I want to go to SXM, I can do that as well too. Uh, and I get a little representation over here um, as to which channel I'm on. This also doubles as a backup camera, of course. And because we're at a prestige level trim, we get surround view. Uh, and that surround view has wheel tracks. Out you go. Come on, you're so close to wanting to get out. Fine, I'm gonna just turn the blower on. So I have a fly up there and I'm trying to use the blower, but you'll note there's no blower controls here. Ah, but there are toggle and this whole control unit becomes uh, aircon. I love this feature. I really wish every vehicle would have this. It's clear, it's easy to use, and it really helps compact all of the buttons that you would normally have. And yeah, these are virtual buttons, but this is the way you do it. You make them clear, easy to use, and you can tell very easily when you're doing them, and they are instantly responsive. So let's get rid of that fly, hopefully. Um, let's go ahead and put on fan all the way up. I'm going to put it on the front. Hopefully that wind will blow him out or at least direct him towards a window. Come on, out you go. Oh, you, you, you. Come on, out you go. Oh, did I get him? I might have gotten him. I don't know. We'll see. Turn it right back down and here we are. Now, as I was saying, <laughs> we have a surround view camera system with tire tracks. That's very good. Uh, we also get that kind of cool 3D view of the exterior. It's a little weird over here because I have a door open right now with this camera. So obviously um, it's just faking what it can do based on its current available data. You can see my chicken coop over there. The seats are very comfortable. Now they are a synthetic material. Uh, they are both heated and cooled at this trim level, which is nice. I also get a heated steering wheel. Hello, Subaru. 
please give us heated steering wheels in your off-road trims. Please, thank you very much. Um, I do have, I think it's kind of a corny lever to control the eight-speed automatic transmission, but it does the job and I also get manual overrides. There are no paddle shifters in this trim. Uh, some of the other trims do have them. Uh, moving on down, I have a wireless charging pad for compatible devices, and then I also get USB-C as well as USB-A and a 12-volt socket. Over here, we have the drive modes. Now, there's normal, sport, smart, and snow. One thing I really like about modern Kias are the cool cup holders. Now, you note this is a fairly large bin. I can put pretty big devices down there, and it's no worry. Um, however, when you want the cup holders to engage, bam and bam, instant cup holders. Uh, you even get the little retention springs on the side. That's kind of a cool setup. Boop. Um, oh, safety. Obviously, collision mitigation, blind spot warning, rear cross traffic alerts, and rear auto braking. It, this basically comes fully loaded. Now, the time we've been waiting for, let's take it for a drive. We're going to hit the freeway and then we're going to take this to our off-road test course where we're going to see how well this thing performs when pushed to the limit. Okay, feel that power. Oh, no, that little 2.5 liter GDI just can't really get out of its own way. Let's try a freeway on-ramp and see how this does. Come on! I see power going to both front and rear wheels. Uh, it's plopping through those eight speeds. And we're up to freeway speed. That took a little while. Now this is a good opportunity to try out the adaptive cruise control system. This is nicely equipped in that it's not just a normal cruise control. It also has stop and go support for rush hour traffic. Now we don't have rush hour traffic here, but I can tell you this does a phenomenal job in it because I did drive this vehicle in this morning and uh, it was stop and go for an hour and a half. And this did great. It paced the vehicle in front of me. It kept it centered, everything that you want to do. And if you wanted to take your hands off the wheel, it actually won't bug you for about five to 10 minutes. But you should always keep your hands on the wheel and always pay attention to what you're doing. So let's go ahead and set this adaptive cruise control. I just hit the button up here, it sets my speed. I'm gonna set the target to the current speed limit, which is 70. And we're gonna let this thing do the work for us. Again, this is just for camera. You should never take your hands completely off the wheel like this. It is doing an excellent job of keeping the vehicle centered. And then if a vehicle pulls in front of me that's going a little slower, it'll slow down to match that vehicle with adequate space. This is actually a really good camera only system. And further, it also supports stop and go if you're in rush hour, which is phenomenal. This is actually, I think now, one of the better systems that you can get in a vehicle. On the freeway here, I am cruising in full front wheel drive. Um, all wheel drive will kick in when necessary, but for sake of economy, it basically disconnects those rear wheels and we're just cruising. However, if I slam on the throttle, I get a little bit of extra torque to those back wheels. Uh, and then now it's a little, little torque and then it disconnects all together. So it's kind of a nice way of getting decent economy. And I am seeing in mixed driving conditions about 25 MPGs, which is right where the EPA says it should be. Freeway cruising is very nice. It's quiet, it's comfortable. The seats feel pretty good. I'm not sure how they'll be for super long travel, uh, but I'm not getting any hot spots, as in no spots which are causing any pain or discomfort. That's nice. Even though these are mild all-terrain tires, they're really not that loud on the freeway. Yes, I can hear them causing a little bit of rumble on the road, uh, but it's not as bad as say, you know, a more aggressive tire like a KO2 or even a Falcon Wild Peak is gonna generate a little bit more noise. But that is one of the benefits of these BFG trail terrains. And I actually did test these trail terrains on my Ford Maverick just last year when these tires came out. And I found them to be okay. Definitely they're optimized for gravel roads, not for where the road ends. Their grip in slippery stuff just wasn't really that great. So right now we're pacing the vehicle in front of us. Uh, even though I have it targeted to 70 miles per hour, which is the speed limit here, it is matching that guy at 64 uh, because obviously not driving very fast. Hello, Subaru Ascent driver. 
Now, I do need to note that it's not uncommon for vehicles in this class to be pretty slow. Uh, the Subaru Forester, epically slow. The Nissan Rogue, very slow. Uh, it's just kind of the thing for the class. Now, if you do want a fast vehicle that is off-road capable in this category, the Ford Bronco Sport Badlands is excellent. However, you don't have as much interior space and it is rather expensive if you option it with the EcoBoost motor. Uh, but do note that is an option. If you need more performance and you want this kind of form factor, that's kind of the direction you have to go. Jumping off the freeway here, where we're gonna test out the Zero to 60 and also see how well this thing performs with various drive modes. Uh, so drive modes are a plenty. Of course, we have normal, sport, smart, and snow. Uh, smart is designed to try to optimize traction around the vehicle um, as necessary. Uh, normal is your day-to-day. -day. Now, sport is the special mode here, and that gives you more aggressive throttle. It also tightens up the steering wheel, and that's about it. Um, I really don't find these modes to be terribly useful. Uh, snow is possibly useful because it'll retard throttle uh, so that when you're, you're not going to be too aggressive and spin wheels, which will then create ice under your tires. Uh, yeah, like right now I am oh in snow mode. You got to really push that throttle down. Also in snow mode, I'm noticing it's keeping it in all wheel drive mode and keeping those revs up. It's not shifting gears quite so quickly. Now, now that I'm in smart mode, Let's see, um, smart mode, yeah, it's more front wheel drive bias. And then sport, I think sport will probably keep the all wheel drive system engaged. Let's see. Uh, no, it, again, with sport mode, it's gonna put the torque where it can and where it needs to be. And right now that is primarily in the front wheels with just a little bit in the rear. So on this forest road, which is a little rough, um, the drive is quiet. I can hear those tires still. Uh, but they're not too bad. There's nothing, nobody's going to be annoyed by it. Let's flip it around and try a zero to 60. So not a lot to do here. I'm going to go ahead and put it into sport, but I will tell you this. If you go wide open throttle, it's the same thing. That is true with most of these type of vehicles. So I'm going to stop completely here and I'm just going to call out numbers. So we're in drive three, two, one, and floor it, and 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. This thing is not quick. <laughs> uh, typical to the class, this is a very slow vehicle. But you get the benefits of good MPGs, right? Right. So on the side roads, the Sportage X-Pro is just great. This is a very nice, very comfortable uh, situation to drive this vehicle in. Uh, but how does it deal with rougher, tougher, dirtier situations? Well, now it's time to head over the mountain pass and hit our private test hill. And we're gonna see just how good this X-Pro is in the dirt. Our test hill here is designed for more extreme off-road vehicles. Um, but that said, this does come with all-terrain tires, and this is a perfect all-terrain scenario because we designed these roads to match some of the different types of roads that you would find in the Cascade Forest, roads that you would take to get up to, say, a trailhead. Now, right off the bat here, I'm a little concerned about ground clearance. Yes, we have 8.3 inches, um, but I'm not sure how that you know, works with the control arms that are hanging down. Also, there is no underbody protection on this vehicle. Yeah, they called something pro and it has no underbody protection, which I think is a huge miss. So I'm gonna go, just crawl very slowly. Now this part normally is not even supposed to be difficult. It's not supposed to be part of the course. It's just getting onto the course, but it is rutted a little bit. And I'm really concerned about scraping. Okay, we made it, good. So the first feature we're gonna look at here is hill descent control. This does have it, it's a little button down there. They call it downhill brake control. What this does is it you know, varies brakes on all four corners uh, to keep you tracking in your intended direction. It's basically a different mapping from ABS because uh, with ABS, that's obviously a high speed situation. This is a low speed control situation. 
Uh, particularly good on ice and gravel is where you would probably think first and foremost about using this system. Now, really good systems allow you to manually control your speed. This one does not. Uh, with this, I am basically going to stick at my approach speed, which right now I'm at uh, one mile per hour. I'm going to take my foot off the gas altogether and off the brake. And I'm rolling down at about two, three mile per hour. And it's actually using engine braking as well. I can hear it going, whoa, 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 whoa. Can you hear that? This is interesting. Most vehicles don't do that. That's really kind of weird. With that hill taken care of, now we're gonna try the fun stuff. Climbing our new run. Now this is what we call gopher run. So this is actually an easy one for crossovers like this. It's really just kind of a, a first test to just kind of give us, you know, a feel for how these vehicles will work in more challenging situations. If it gets through gopher run, no problem, and I expect that it will, then we'll take it up to the sidewinder. We are not doing the Rattler today because that is our course that is covered in big rocks and I'm afraid clearance is an issue, but it's particularly an issue because there's no underbody protection. The general guideline we have to bring anything to this course is basically it needs to have more than eight inches of ground clearance uh, and it needs all-terrain tires. That's basically our, our high level requirements. Uh, but approach angle can matter. And if we feel like there's a vehicle that's gonna get damaged coming on the course, we just won't bring it on in the first place. Uh, vehicles that have done well, pretty much uh, the Subaru Crosstrek, the Subaru Forester Wilderness, the Subaru Outback uh, Wilderness did really well. Um, the Bronco Sport Badlands from Ford also did really well. So now we're gonna see how Kia's entry into the off-road segment is gonna do. So to set up the vehicle for go for run, I am going to put it into smart mode. Now, one thing I don't quite understand is if you look at the sales literature for this vehicle online on the Kia.com website or KiaUSA.com, uh, they do list it as having a multi off-road multi-terrain system. It doesn't, at least nothing that I can see. Um, I have drive modes, normal, sport, smart, and snow, but every single Kia Sportage has that. It's not unique to this model. Um, another thing to, that I really have to note here is I will be engaging the center lock when I need it, but it's not a center differential lock. Even on their window sticker, they call it a center differential lock. It is not. That is incorrect factually, and it's overselling what it does. A differential lock would be a proper 50-50 lock in the middle based on a speed differential unit built into the vehicle. This just has a center clutch, not the same thing. You can't even extrapolate to have them to be the same thing. It is not a differential, it is a clutch. And I will harangue them about this until they start being honest about what this vehicle has. The fact is you gotta buy a G-Wagon or a Land Cruiser or something, you know, more than $80,000 typically to get a center differential. So that out of my system, I will never refer to this as a center locking differential because it is not that. I will just refer to it as a locking something or other. I'll say that it's lock or whatever. I will center couple, I, I don't know. You will not hear me call it a differential. And if you're curious why, that is why. So it is not on right now. We are just gonna be in, let's try smart mode because I'm assuming that is the smartest mode uh, in terms of applying wheel braking. And wheel braking is how you shift power left to right uh, in a open differential based system. And this one does have open differentials in the front and the back with a coupler in the middle to transmit power to the back. Already we are, <laughs> We're churning tires. Um, okay, so I, I just wanna make a note about go for run here. This is not supposed to be the hard part. <laughs> ah, let's get a little momentum. We have driven multiple vehicles through this since we built it, uh, but they've all been actual like vehicles with center locking transfer cases. Now this is a freshly cut course, so it might be a little more challenging than it will be once it hardens up. But I'm just in smart mode. I have not turned on center lock at all. Come on. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, this is proving to be more challenging than I expected. Come on, send it with a little momentum. Ah. Okay, now this is a great opportunity 
yeah, this is a good opportunity to turn on that center lock. Center lock on. Let's turn that front camera on because we do have surround view cameras. Okay, so now I can see what my front tires are doing, sorry. Okay, I have that center coupler locked. It's not really a coupler. Power is going 50-50 and it is not getting anywhere. Um, hmm. Let's rewind it a little bit. And we'll have to use momentum, but we can't use too much momentum because we don't have because we don't have bash plates on this. And I'm a little concerned about, you know, topping up and over and bashing the nose. Come on, momentum. I, now I'm going full throttle and it just doesn't have enough power or enough grip. Are you kidding me? We're gonna have to do this rally style. Oh, you guys want one more thing, I'm sure. You want me to do this with traction control off. So let's see what that does. It's the same thing, or worse. Well, the, the plus side is nothing's overheated yet. Okay, I'm gonna go do this rally style now, and uh, hopefully I don't get caught out around the corner. And yeah, this is a little, gonna be a little sketchy, because uh, yeah, no underbody protection, as I've mentioned. A rock could get flung up and hit a bad spot. So I have traction control off because I wanna slide a little bit. Uh, I do have that center lock on, and let's just send it, see if we can get up it. Momentum, 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 momentum. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And it cut power completely. Oh, and I got to this part. That was way, way more challenging than it was supposed to be. I mean, it's just a dirty corner. It's loose dirt, yeah, but it's not like sand or anything. It's large clumps. And those tires just couldn't find grip. Also, the vehicle just cut power whenever it felt that it was slipping. Uh, the center lock, um, traction off, smart mode, none of it mattered. It could not get up that without using momentum. Now let's finish up the go for run and uh, looking at the way that just went, I can see right here, I'm gonna have to use a lot of momentum. Okay, here we go. Let's see if this, uh works oh my mercy okay so traction control is off single stage um, i have the center coupler locked and i'm in smart let's just go to normal smart didn't do much for me so let's just go to normal mode and see how that does so i do want to send it but i also kind of don't want to go too fast for fear of nosing in this has a very a poor approach angle and i'm a little concerned it's going to dig Okay, that's not too bad. Not too bad. Huh. Oh, yeah, hit a little bit there. And, oh, there we go. Yeah. So the second half of Go For Run was actually easier than the first corner. Kind of surprised by that. Um, I've driven it multiple times, but so far I've only done it with uh, my Ranger. And I think that's it. Of course, somebody will be like, no, in this episode, you drove this other vehicle up it. Well, right now, I'm just remembering that I've driven it in my Ranger a lot. Uh, so, and it, it had no problems, clearly, because it has a low range and a transfer case and yada, 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 and a rear locking diff. Uh, this has none of that. <laughs> and the tires are not as good. Now it's time for Sidewinder. Now this is one of our more difficult courses in that it has a number of uh, obstacles on the route. First thing, we have a cross cut, and then that's followed by logs with rocks, and then it's followed by a very steep incline uh, climb. So uh, this is really gonna test how well this shifts power left and right, as well as back and forth. Now keep in mind, this only has a <laughs> naturally aspirated 2.5 liter engine. It does not have a lot going on under the hood. Now I've turned on my front camera so I can kind of see what's going on. My right wheel is already in, let's see, now it's in the, it's in the ditch. Cross cuts are very common, at least in the Pacific Northwest trails, uh, simply because they are naturally occurring. They are where water runs over the trail and it takes out part of the trail with it. Very, very common occurrence. So this is the kind of thing that you do need to get over. 
think we need to make that more difficult. That was a little too easy. Well, these logs are going to make up the difference, I think. Now, thankfully, I do have a front camera here, so I can align my tire right on the rock that I want. And that is going to lift me up and over, and hopefully we don't grind. Eight inches is not a lot. This really checks that side clearance and no grinding so far. I don't want to go too fast because I don't want to break something. Now at this point, we're going to lose some traction on that outside wheel. It's going to shift power around and up and over we go. Okay, in a more controlled situation, this all wheel drive system actually doesn't do that bad of a job. It's, it's decent actually. But in that loose dirt, these tires just could not keep up. Okay, so we're on the incline. I'm, I know I need to use momentum, but I can't use so much that I damage the underside. I know I keep repeating that, but that is just a fact because sometimes people just kind of, you know, uh, some people just don't uh, watch the whole episode all the way through. Ooh, round a little bit there. Now I'm going to try to keep a wheel on this rise. Let's see if I can get up here. Ah, uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Break over, break over, break over, break over, break over. Ah! And we did it! Oh boy. Okay. I uh, should have kept momentum. Should have kept momentum. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We're moving. We're moving a little. We're moving. Yeah, there we go. Once it gets gripped, away we go. Woo! Okay. To call this an X Pro, I think is a bit much. If you're gonna call something pro, give it underbody protection, give it proper all terrains. And now, at that point, we're talking pro. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share videos. We make them for you, and I hope you enjoy them.